Ladies and gentlemen, and unboxers of all ages, welcome to the Markman M2 video series. This is Markman. Today in this video, we're going to be unboxing the Jenkins GKJ4500 gasoline-powered electric generator. I immediately noticed that the carton was not factory sealed. This caused me some concern, and I'll give the generator extra inspection. Towards the top of the box was a piece of thin plywood which was protecting the generator and I'll keep that probably and put it under the generator once I get it started. The generator was wrapped in plastic and there was a quick start guide on top of the generator. What I'll do is I'll stand the generator on its side so you can better see what's in the box and I'll pull the generator out sideways, but I'll be careful in doing so. There are no fluids in the generator, no gasoline or oil, so nothing can spill at this point. You'll notice the filler cap on the top, and there's a tag on the filler cap, which is reminding you, you have to add engine oil. And up towards the top, you'll see the gasoline gauge which will tell you how much gasoline you currently have in the four gallon gas tank. I'm just gonna carefully pull the generator out of the box sideways and then stand it down in its correct position. The generator slides out of the carton quite easily, but as I mentioned, it is not a factory sealed carton, so I'm being extra careful to see if there's any imperfections. I put it down, and then I'm going to push the plastic out of the way. You're looking at the recoil start side of the motor. There are a couple of moisture absorbing pads in the box, which I'll keep for later and perhaps use for something I would package at a later date. Here is your interface panel. It's quite simplistic. Here is your main power outlet with two outlets. And here is your cylindrical RV outlet. Here is the breaker switch. What I like about the breaker switch is this actual switch format, not a push button. So by pushing this switch, to the bottom, you're disconnecting all electrical output. Here is your main on off switch. Up for both switches is on, down is off. Or for the breaker, down is blown position. Here is your oil filler cap, which I'm removing and inspecting. Obviously there's no oil in the crankcase. I'm now removing the gasoline tank filler cap and I'll remove the tag that tells you to stop and to add engine oil. The gasoline cap is a vented cap. You do not have to worry about it venting. It is always venting so that you do not have suction in the gas tank. Again, a reminder to put in your engine crankcase oil. Here again is the interface panel with description. Up on down is off for your main switch you have the two power outlets and then you have your RV round cylindrical plug and your breaker there is also a little bag in the carton and inside this bag is your manual there is also a spark plug wrench with small handle and also, which I really like, is the RV cylindrical plug. I will use this and connect a 12 gauge power cord. It would be a three conductor. I'm giving the generator a wipe down. I've always found that if you wanna check for imperfections, it's always good to use a cloth. Here's a better look at your filler cap and your gas gauge. Now I'm adding regular gasoline 87 octane. I'm only putting in a gallon and a half or so. 
the tank capacity is four gallons. Here's my engine oil. I'm gonna go ahead and put in synthetic and it calls for a half quart or just over a half quart. I'm using 1040 weight synthetic oil. The manual actually calls for regular 1030 weight oil. Valvoline gives you a handy little measuring area on the side of the container. So I measured out about a half quart. I'm now adding the half quart of oil to the crankcase and then I'll check the level and then close it back up. Motor oil. This is something I like to do. You can consider an option. I like to pull on the recoil starter with the filler cap off. You'll notice a little oil bubbling out. This moves oil around the crankcase so I could be sure that everything's well lubricated when I attempt to start the engine. It also serves as an efficient way to remove any excess oil. You do not want to run the generator if you have too much oil in it. The beauty here is that as long as the generator is somewhat level, the oil level will go to the brim of the filler hole, so any excess oil would naturally flow out as well. You are watching the Markman M2 video series review of the Jenkins GKJ4500 gasoline powered generator. Here I'm inspecting the air filter to make sure that there's no element in there blocking the air path. I give it a quick tug to see if I can start it. Seems like the engine's near starting, however it is not kicking over. Here is the petcock valve for the gas. You turn it counterclockwise to open the valve. Here is a decal that shows you the quick start guide and a smaller decal that shows you what to do when you shut the generator off. I'm going to go ahead and use some starter fluid which I've used very successfully in the past for hard to start small motors. I'm taking off the air filter cover now and I'm just going to simply give the element a spray with the starter fluid. This is usually enough to get any hard to start small engine started. So after spraying the filter element, I'm gonna give it another tug and we'll see what happens. The engine is very close to kicking over. But I do notice that the choke perhaps is in the wrong position. I tilt the gas tank to make sure that there's gas flowing through the gas hose and make sure that the gas valve is in the right position which it is. I'm going to go ahead and reposition the choke. The choke has three basic positions full choke in the middle and then full open so I put the choke into the closed position. I'm going to go ahead and give it a tug again. Again, the engine is very close to kicking over, but not quite. So the next resort is to pull out the air filter element after checking everything to make sure everything's in its proper position. And then I'm gonna spray starter fluid directly into the carburetor with the choke open. So I open the choke, spray into the carburetor, and then I'm gonna go ahead and close the choke back up. After all the additional preparation, I'm fairly convinced that the engine's going to start now. After two tugs, the engine does start to kick over, and then it starts to drop its own gasoline and runs on its own. Shut the engine down and want to make sure it can be restarted.
I did acquire this generator at a very low budget price, so my expectations were not very high. But I immediately noticed that it is quite loud. And I had seen in the advertisement where they were saying 60 decibels, which is actually quite quiet for a generator. And I would say this thing is well above 90. So if you're looking at this for a review on the purchase, keep in mind that this thing is quite loud. Here's my evaluation scorecard for this purchase. Power output, I was impressed, A, there was very good power output on this generator. Setup and usage, it was a little bit clumsy, I'm going to give it a B. Value, bang for the buck, B+. Plus. I paid budget pricing for this generator and I feel like we got a pretty good deal. Durability best estimate C plus. I didn't get the feeling it was the best built generator. Noise C. I was very disappointed with the noise as it was much louder than the advertisement had claimed. Overall rating somewhere between a B plus and an A minus. A little bit about dB noise levels. They were claiming in the advertisement it would come in around 60. However, I found it more to be around 90, which is a significant difference in decibel ratings.